This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, High Street's heavily insulated housing project is teaching contractors how to create energy efficient buildings. Invercargill City Council's consent processes look likely to undergo an independent review following complaints. And East Otago High School pupil Sophie Woodhouse and her horse Jerry's Boy are set to race up north quite soon. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Daryl Baser. High Street's super insulated housing project is teaching contractors how to create structures which keep the heat in and pollution out. The co-housing project is being built by eHouse Otago and is expected to be completed by this time next year. The urban housing project on the site of the former High Street School has been a work in progress for more than three years and is now only a year away from completion. Uh, the project is well underway. We've got uh, a large workforce here now and uh, overall in the project I think we would be uh, about the halfway point. Um, we've got completion uh, due November uh, 2020 next year so we've got another 12 months. E-House Otago Managing Director Rob Cunningham says the buildings are being made to world leading specifications including a heat recovery ventilation system. It will be certified to international standard. It is uh, E-House uh, Euro Classic and it is a really well insulated, airtight, uh, with real quality air. It is, um, has a heat uh, recovery ventilating system. The High Street project had been on the drawing board for a few years before Channel 39 visited the site in 2016 with school buildings intact and being lived in by members of urban co-housing Otipoti who were looking forward to the work being done. Oh, I want it started and built so that we can move in because I'm really looking forward to living in a place that has a constant temperature of 20 degrees with no extra heating and I want to be in there after only one more winter. There have been a couple more winters since 2016, but Rob Cunningham says the residents should all be very happy with the end results. So we have really good insulation uh, from the foundation, the walls right up through the roof areas, um, and with uh, heating, almost minimal heating requirements throughout the course of the entire year in all areas. We're aiming at um, you know, 20 degrees in all areas at all times with minimum heat. Um, it is achieved through the insulation and through the air tightness. When completed, the High Street residence will include 21 new units, three retrofitted apartments, communal green spaces, dining rooms and offices. All of the living units on the communally owned site have been sold. In Dunedin, the South Today. It's not yet summer, but parts of the central South Island are already reaching extreme fire risk levels. Recent fires around the South are anecdotal evidence of an increased fire risk. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says the fire ravaged parts of Australia show just what could happen here. Niwa forecaster Ben Noel says the dry weather has begun sooner than normal. And climate change climate data shows that strong hot winds in parts of the country have baked the soil dry. Isaiah Piho of Fire and Emergency in Otago and Southland says recent fires have provided valuable training for many staff. Fire and Emergency New Zealand is asking people to stick to fire bans and restrictions when they're in place. Invercargill's City Council consent processes look likely to undergo an independent review following complaints raised at a regulatory committee meeting yesterday. Invercargill lawyer Liz Henry asked more than 60 people about their dealings with council and almost 80% said the processes were unsatisfactory. Um, I've had repeated complaints and concerns raised by clients with their inability to get any certainty regarding commercial leasing, inability to get any certainty regarding <coughs> entry into certain contractual arrangements regarding sale and purchase agreements, Delays and unnecessary expenses occurred and incurred by them in relation to building and renovation. Invercargill lawyer lets them have it. 
as she blasts Invercargill City Council at a regulatory committee meeting on Tuesday. She says she recently conducted a survey where 63 people responded and 50 of the respondents, almost 80%, reported negative experiences with the local council's building and planning process. There's concerns around the complaints process, your fee structure and its transparency and the unnecessary regulation and red tape. I can stress to you that the problem with regard to timing and processing of consents has been illustrated within the survey as existing for a long time. Deputy Mayor Tony Biddle says it's time for the council to be proactive and not reactive about the matter. You can appreciate that council's been very open and honest about the fact that we are under-resourced and I think that that's a, an issue throughout the country. Um, what, are you, what are your opinion, what's your opinion around that? And if, if you are that understaffed and under-resourced which tends to be suggested. Um, the fact that you're unable to hire staff is not my problem. You've got a regulatory function that you must meet. If you can't meet it, ask for help. Businessman Wayne Harper also spoke, saying he'd provided design-build services for three separate mechanical ventilation jobs in Invercargill, Dunedin and Queenstown, and found Invercargill to take a very different approach. All three jobs are almost identical in scope and dollar value. I submitted the same producer statement and this is nine forms to each of the three TLAs. The need in Queenstown have been accepted with no questions asked. Invercargill has put me on hold twice and I was asked to submit additional information that I've never been requested previously, um, even on earlier projects for Invercargo City. The committee ended up approving to take a recommendation to full council for a staff review as well as an independent review of the consent process. In Invercargill, the South today. A rescue helicopter was called, called to Moiraki this afternoon after a person was reportedly hit by a utility vehicle just after 1pm. Police say the extent of the person's injuries are unclear, but a woman at the scene in Haven Street said a male was lying on the ground under a blanket. She declined to give her name, but says the ute remained over the edge of a bank at the village's wharf. Two fire engines, along with police and ambulance staff, attended the scene. East Otago High School pupil Sophie Woodhouse and her horse Jerry's boy are set to race up north later this week. The 16-year-old is hoping to do Otago proud in Australasia's biggest, biggest youth harness racing competition at Auckland's Alexandra Park. Getting some practice at Mosgill with a pony called Power of Hope, Kids Cart's driver Sophie Woodhouse is set to represent Otago with a different pony called Jerry's Boy at Australasian Harness Racing's biggest stage in Auckland later this week. I'm hoping he'll do really well. Like, yeah, he proved himself that. He proved himself more times. So just, yeah. Woodhouse says she's been competing in kids' carts, a scaled-down version of professional harness racing, for nine years. Recently, she drove Jerry's boy at the New Zealand Cup race in Christchurch, where they came a respectable second. It was really good. It went really well. Um, he led the whole way for both, for both races. Yep. and was just overtaken at the end. The 16-year-old is one of 27 aspiring drivers <laughs> from across Australia and New Zealand who are looking forward to going head-to-head -head in six heats and a final to decide the winner of the 2019 Kids Karts Inter-Dominion Championship. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, lots of experiences from it. And she says she's looking forward to getting an up-close look at Australia's best horses and drivers in the main Inter-Dominion series. Yeah, it's going to be cool to watch the professionals racing. Woodhouse says her plan for the future is to become a professional harness driver. In Dunedin, the South today. Still to come on the South Today, we catch up with the recent environmental protest in Dunedin and it's that time of the year as the Christmas lights are turned on in Ashburton. See you after the break.
If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Lana Castle is proud to showcase their new retail space. Simply purchase an annual garden pass for year-round access to the garden, cafe and gift shop or apply for a host card giving you full access to the castle, ballroom, cafe, gift shop and garden when accompanied by a full paying guest. Check out the website for full terms and conditions. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits! Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. No my no, welcome back. A range of local groups opposing oil drilling staged a performance in Dunedin's Octagon recently, attempting to dig for oil and gas. The protest was in response to plans by Austrian-owned company OMV to explore, to explore for oil and gas in the Great South Basin. Is there oil in the centre of Dunedin? People of all ages came out to protest new oil and gas exploration in the Octagon recently. The protesters included Oil Free Otago, 350 Dunedin and Extinction Rebellion. Austrian oil company OMV have faced protest action across New Zealand from those who strongly oppose their plans to drill for oil in the Great South Basin. So what OMV have done, they've um, gone and brought um, Shell's existing permit to get around the government's uh, ban on offshore oil and gas drilling and it's their attempt to uh, squeeze as much money out of um, the sunset industry as they can. The Octagon protest came during a busy week for Greenpeace, with protesters storming OMV's hench boat at Port of Timaru. Oil Free Otago say they want to raise public awareness by showing oil drilling in the middle of a city centre. So we want to compare and contrast the stupidity of OMV actually going out and possibly risking everything in our ocean for a quick profit. Protesters say OMV is said to be one of about 100 companies that are responsible for 70% of the world's climate emissions. We've got to stop emissions right now. We don't need any more gas and oil. In fact, we can't even use all the gas and oil that we already know about. Hundreds of people from across the country are now preparing to travel to OMV's headquarters in New Plymouth, where a three-day public demonstration will begin on December 2nd in Dunedin, the South Today. The annual lighting of Ashburton's Christmas tree has been proudly done by the children of Netherby School. The tree is in the EA Network's centre, Ashburton's new $35 million sports complex. Nine-year-old Kumai Ross of Netherby School leads his classmates in a haka ahead of the lighting of Ashburton's Christmas tree.
Mayor Neil Brown, complete with Santa hat, was there to thank the children and shared the reason for the season. It also had an important question for the children. We've come along here today to light up the tree, turn the lights on, which is going to be a great occasion. And how many sleeps is it until Christmas? Many of the youngsters correctly said Christmas is about a month away. And with the spirit of the season upon them, the mayor and children sang Christmas carols, including Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Children were also given the chance to try on the mayor's mayoral chains. In Ashburton, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, Otago University held an emergency services exercise with police firing blank rounds, and we'd have a look at the outlook for Thursday and beyond. See you after the break. of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Garrett or Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garrett or's quality service. Garrett or Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends, and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Thanks for staying with us. The University of Otago hosted a training exercise for emergency services today. It's understood around 30 people were involved in the event. And a warning, this simulated exercise contains some images which some people may find disturbing. Action stations. The normally peaceful Otago University campus is the scene of a training exercise for police, fire and emergency New Zealand and St John. This scenario involves an offender driving onto university grounds, injuring people and then brandishing a knife. The event had strict health and safety procedures, especially with armed police potentially firing blank rounds. The exercise was, um, I've driven this car through um, the university grounds and um, run over some people, injured some people, um, and then I've become injured myself and then fallen out of the car um, where I've been, been the police. So. Usually a firefighter, Simon Greenall was called back to reprise his role as an offender. So I've worked with the police um, out at the airport 
um, with some of the other training drills as an offender. Um, so they asked me if I'd come along today and, and um, do a couple more uh, incidents with them. Greenall thinks his next job might be at South Pacific Pictures. Oh, pretty good, I think. <laughs> yeah. Waiting for my short and sweet call up. <laughs> As well as the live scenario, the university's emergency broadcast system was also tested. The university says it's important to practice for any possible emergency event which may occur on campus. In Dunedin, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. High Street's super insulated housing project is teaching contractors how to create structures which keep the heat in and pollution out. Invercargill's City Council consent processes look unlikely to undergo an independent review following some recent complaints. And East Otago High School pupil Sophie Woodhouse and her little horse Jenny's boy, Jerry's Boy are set to race up north later this week. Time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. Welcome Mr Hayden Meikle. Good evening Daryl, how are you? I'm good mate, yourself? Yeah good. Good, good. Let's see what's happening tonight. Obviously the Scantha trial, we will have the latest. As we speak, the jury is deliberating. And so it's a wait and see, really, for us. We wait and see if they come out with a verdict tonight or if they get asked to uh, come back tomorrow. So let's see on that one. Big story, the Octagon closure. So this is never ending, really. Uh, news today is that Dunedin City Council has sort of backtracked, I guess. They're saying they are, they are going to review the closure. Uh, following lots of feedback, and obviously lots of feedback from local businesses mainly, but I'm sure some, some Joe Blogs, punters as well, keenly interested. It's, uh, it's going to be an ongoing topic, isn't it? The whole future of the Octagon and George Street, and do we keep cars out permanently or temporarily? So, yeah, some interesting stuff out of that. And speaking of sort of traffic, there's, the DCC is going to put in a new traffic monitoring system, and it's to sort of look at flows around the city, I guess, as we prepare for a fairly major project, the hospital rebuild and other stuff coming to where traffic goes and where it can flow and all that sorts of stuff. So that'll be interesting. It's a very uh, it's a new technology, new, very new technology, so that's going to be an interesting story. And a lot of sport tomorrow, heaps of interesting sports stories. So Ryan Fox, the very popular hard-hitting Kiwi golfer, has confirmed he will be back to the New Zealand Open, which is great, at, uh, up there in Arrowtown in, I guess, February. I'm not sure the exact dates this year. But Foxy's always a, a real draw card, so that's good news. We've got the Targa Volts cricket game today. They were having a heck of a chase uh, there today. And believe it or not, Daryl, and you'll be excited about this, but we're previewing the start of the Highlanders rugby season, which technically starts tomorrow, believe it or not. Technically tomorrow? How here, come? Here we are in November, and, and tomorrow, well, sort of, the campaign starts tomorrow, so the Highlanders are uh, gathering tomorrow for the first time. And, and so it begins. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> rugby season is literally... Uh, never ending. So. That seems a little early. <laughs> it does seem early, but those boys will be enjoying a nice hot summer running around down at Logan Park, I'm sure. So, all that and more. Tomorrow's paper should be a good one. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Thanks, all Dad. that and more, as you say. Time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with today's southern view, a ground based bouquet of southern blooms. Looking at the situation, a ridge of high pressure builds across the region on Friday, ahead of a warmer northwesterly airflow coming at the weekend. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport are set for a cloud or two and 21 degrees. Heading over to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim can also expect the odd cloud or two and 21 degrees. Heading down to Canterbury, you'll have cloudy skies across this area. Kaikoura heads for 23, Christchurch you'll set for a clear blue sky day and 25, while Ashburton you should make it to 27 degrees. To the southern outlook, Balclutha and the Catlins can both expect light southwesterlies with some cloud. The Catlins heads for 19 and Balclutha 18, while Lumsden and Gore are both due for 17 degrees. Heading to central Otago, Wanaka and Queenstown, you're both due for fresh northwesterlies, cloud increasing with 20 degrees. Alexandra, you're also in for northwesterlies, but you're set to be the warmest place in central on 22. 
while Tiano, you should plan for light southwesterlies and 17 degrees. Heading to the northern towns in this area, Timaru and Wamaru have variable winds and high cloud. Timaru 25, Wamaru 24, Twizel and Omarama can both expect moderate westerlies and some cloud with 20 degrees. In Dunedin, some high cloud tonight with northerly winds looking at an overnight low of 9. Mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with warm temperatures and it'll become cloudy in the afternoon. A high of 24 and a low of 9. Sunny periods at first on Friday but becoming mostly cloudy with cool northeasterlies. A high of 14 and a low of 9. And in Invercargill, showers clearing tonight with southwesterlies decreasing and an overnight low of 9 degrees. Cloudy at first tomorrow, but sunny periods increasing during the morning and cool southwesterlies dying out. A high of 17 and a low of 8. Showers, become, showers clearing and becoming fine and sunny on Friday with southwesterlies. A high of 18 and a low of 8. And that's all from the South Today team for this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.